making headlines in your world in September of 2010. Our top stories include... The 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center are remembered. President Obama makes two proposals to get the economy going. Kodak is set to settle two discrimination suits. A bidding war in the car rental business could mean a costlier business trip or vacation. And in 2010, there is still a high distrust for the medical profession. Our top story. Nine years ago, terrorists from an organization that most Americans had never heard of took control of four commercial airliners. Three hit their targets, while passengers heroically forced the fourth into the ground. The 9-11 attacks are remembered. The Twin Towers in New York were destroyed, and the Pentagon in Washington was heavily damaged. But the human loss of 2,019 people is what endures on the American landscape the most. In a new documentary on the attacks that debuted this week, former National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice spoke about the chaos in the minutes after the first plane struck. We had no idea um, where it was safe and where it wasn't. We didn't think the bunker of the White House was safe. Of course, Al-Qaeda is a name that everyone knows now in this country. At the time, the group was hiding in Afghanistan. The U.S. invaded that country shortly after, and the war there continues to this day. And while many Al-Qaeda members have been caught or killed, their leader, Osama bin Laden, remains alive and at large. Well, the current crisis in this country remains the economy. And with unemployment stuck at 9.6%, the White House and Democrats are feeling the heat to do something just weeks before the midterm elections in November. The unemployment gap for blacks remains higher than the national average. Only one in three African Americans under the age of 25 have jobs. President Obama, under pressure to do more, launched two proposals he says will create jobs and bring more money back into the budget to pay for them. The president pitched a $50 billion infrastructure plan to fix the country's roads, bridges, and airports. He also says that while he wants tax cuts for the middle class to remain in place, he wants the Bush-era tax cuts for the wealthy to be repealed. Obama says the tax repeal would restore $750 billion to the budget over the next 10 years. Well, pundits say that they doubt the Obama proposals will become a reality in light of those elections that are coming up, which could dramatically change the balance of power in Washington. A company whose name has been closely associated with pictures for the past century may have color issues that have absolutely nothing to do with their images. A judge has cleared the way for Kodak to pay $21 million to settle two discrimination lawsuits. The photo giant will pay more than 3,000 past and current employees, about $10 million. The rest will go to their lawyers. The suits filed in 2004 and 2007 claim that Kodak routinely passed over black employees for raises, promotions, and generally fostered a hostile work environment. In a statement, Kodak said the settlement, quote, represents a resolution of mutual interest and it absolutely does not suggest any wrongdoing. The settlement amounts will range from $1,000 to $50,000 per claimant. If you rent a car in your travels, a deal that's been revving up since April may have kicked into high gear. In the end, for you it could mean a more expensive business trip or vacation, as the Dollar Thrifty Group is about to be gobbled up. Hertz Car Rental has agreed to pay more for Dollar Thrifty than rival Avis. Hertz made an original offer of $1.1 billion in April. Avis started what some described as a hostile takeover process and upped the ante. The latest Hertz bid is $1.56 billion, but Avis is again expected to raise its offer. Dollar Thrifty shareholders will meet on the proposal at the end of the month. Hertz has 8,000 locations worldwide. The Avis budget group has 6,500. Dollar Thrifty's 1,500 facilities worldwide is seen as key for industry dominance. In health news... It appears that decades after the start of the Tuskegee experiments, blacks still distrust the medical profession by a significant percentage. A recent national survey by the New York Blood Center revealed that 17% of African American participants, about one in five, did not trust hospitals in 2010. This is the main reason cited for the lowest participation of blacks in blood or organ donation and clinical research. This as blacks are more disproportionately affected by a wide range of health issues. From 1932 to 1972, the U.S. Public Health Service recruited 400 poor sharecroppers. Participants that had syphilis were not given available drugs, even though they were told they were being treated. For a complete look at any of the business stories affecting your world, subscribe to the Network Journal. And feel free to check us out here at TNJ.com. That's the Network Journal Report. 
I'm Gary Anthony Ramsey.